everybody. I don't know if I can follow that act there, but uh, can't play the drums. What have I got in my hand? See? You see that? It's a set of keys, right? I don't think they fit anything. Maybe an old castle or something, right? But I want to talk to you today about keys to the plan of God. Key thoughts, key things you need to know about the plan of God. Amen? There's your plan, and there's God's plan. Most people don't even realize there's two plans. You can do what you want with your life, or you can decide to follow Jesus' plan. Let me tell you this, His plan's a lot better than your plan. Is that right? God's plan is a lot better, and you know, His plan is community, it's family, and we're family here, amen? And as we grow as a church, we're a young church, but as we grow, we want, a, we want the feeling or sense of a family. Because isn't that what church is supposed to be? A body of believers that is connected to one another. But too many times we see disconnected members in the body. But the reason that is, is because every member must find their connection. You have a place, okay? You do have a place to be, all right? You know, you have a, a people to belong to. You really do. And let me encourage you, they're out there somewhere. Maybe you've been looking your whole life for a place to belong. Everybody wants to belong. I want to belong. Don't lie to me now. How many want to belong? All of us do. We're searching for a sense of connection and belonging. And that's why church is important. Amen. So today after church, I want to encourage you to not leave so fast. We've got a, a bunch of stuff out there. Go check it out. Ways to get connected. Is this for me? Honestly, no, it's for you. Because when you're connected, it allows you to discover your connection to the body of Christ. Amen? Uh, and when you, when you connect in the church at some place, even if it's one time a month doing something, helping, it begins to activate and you begin to see your God-given abilities, your God-given talents, and your God-given call. When I was 13 years old and I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, I had no clue what I was called to do. I just fell in love with Jesus. And you know, you know, as pastors and ministers, we can't forget, really, that's the most important thing there is in life. You know, we love to teach success principles. We love to teach all these different things in life, prayer and faith and relationships and family. But really, you know, it's about the key, the bottom level, the foundation of life is, is Him. It's all about Him, see? And when we lose sight of Him, first place, seek first the kingdom, that's when your life gets off and you go into your plan. And when you get into your plan, it costs you. But see, who do you think knows better where you're to be, you or God? Do you think you know better than God what city you're supposed to live in? Wait, maybe you didn't realize there's a city for you to be in right now. I mean, just take off the cover off your mind right now and give you some light on it. There are places that you must be, that you're called to be. There are people that you must meet, that you're called to meet, and you're called to share your life with them. And you will know when you get around them. Amen? But also, there's also a group of people that will always support you and be behind you in what you're called to do. Have you ever went through a rough time in life? Anybody here? And you thought, I just don't have, who's, who do I have? Who's watching out for me? Well, we are. I am. Amen? I watch out for our people. I pray over our people, and a lot of times God shows me things about people in the church, and I call them and help them out, all right? But I'm just telling you this, we are a family. Today, use the time after church to go and find an area in the church to connect with. I want to encourage you young people. When I was a teenager, you know what I did? I slept at the church sometime. I was so hungry for God. Turn up the hunger. It's your choice. You work out, right? Do you work out? You do, right? You work out those big arms. I know you do, those big arms you got, right? Well, it, 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 you work out, but the same, in the same way, we have a spiritual discipline, the same as we discipline ourselves to work out. We must have spiritual disciplines. A spiritual discipline is prayer. People say, oh, you're making it a law. You have to pray to be close to God. No, it's, you have to talk to somebody to know them. It's not rocket science. Right? All right. That's, you know, so I just want to encourage you. We're here for you. This church is a, is a family church, okay? I'm not here to get what I can get out of you and build my ministry here. God spoke to us to come build this church here in this city. He told us to come back to Tulsa. He told us to start this church. So that's why we're here. We're here for you. We're not here of our own plan. This church is div divinely ordained by God. Are there churches who are not? 
I think there probably are, but I'm not judging any man. I'm just saying this. If we will, I've, I've had, I planted a church once, but it wasn't God's will for me to be in that city. And guess what? It almost cost me my life. Did you know you can be thinking you're doing the right thing, but what's the most important thing? Lay it at God's feet. Every day, man. Every day, you'd lay yourself down on the altar. It's a daily thing. We present our life to Jesus. We present our life to Him daily. When I wake up, I give myself to Him fresh every day. Fresh. Why? It's a new day. This is the day. Every day. Now, we're talking about 12 keys to knowing the plan of God for your life. All right? 12 keys. How to follow the Holy Spirit is part of this. Now, I'm not going to get into deep, some parts of that as well. Yes. And hearing the voice of God is very important. How many of you know that God does speak? How many of you want to know how to hear the voice of God better? Raise your hand. How many want to know how to follow the Holy Spirit better? Raise your hand. Amen? All right. God's plan for our life is to be part of a family or community of believers. I just want to say that very strongly. Why? Because I need you. I need you. I can't... I'm, I'm, a, I'm the pastor, sure. But I need you... I mean, what, how would this church be without the worship team? How would this church be without the, the, the service manager? How would the service be without the sound team or the, all the different teams of greeters, the people that come in early at 7 in the morning to get this stage set up? See, everybody's important. It's not just me. I, I'm the one seen sometimes more. But you know what? I would rather wear a paper bag over my head sometimes. Because I don't really care if you see me. Amen? It's about us together. We're a church family. Amen? And as you, you, you root yourself in where God's called you to be, if it's here, great, do it. But you're not going to find out until you connect. You need to connect. Connect today. And then what happens is you'll know if this is where you're supposed to be or not. But if not, there's a church out there. You're welcome. All pastors out there, you're welcome. There's a church out there for you. I'm not trying to take you in here to be a member of this church. I'm trying to get you to the right place. I mean, if you really care about people, it's about getting them in the right place, right? You know, not just getting them for yourself. This is about the right place for you, all right? Now, my opening statement, I finally got to it, but don't worry. We're not going to go very long today, but my opening statement, which came after 10 minutes. <laughs> Ready? <clears throat> what are we talking about? What's this? You're talking about the plan of God. That's right. You're right. Keys. Many of you know if you want to get in a house or get in a, a room or a safe, you got to have a code or keys. There are keys. There are things that we must realize. Many, most. Not many. I'm dramatizing my point. Many live and die. And never know there's a plan for their life. Many Christians, they never even put the key in the door to open the door because there's no desire. That's what the Lord showed me. He said, the reason people don't go after my plan is because there's no hunger. There's no desire. Right? The plan of God is protected for you, not from you. Because you'd mess it up. But he, he's not hiding it from you. He's, he wants you to see it. But there is a, a something inside of us. He, he wants to see our eager desire. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the... Delight yourself in the Lord. Delight. What's it mean to delight? Well, if I delight in Judy Joe, it means we have a party, man. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have us a party. When I was dating her, man, we, you know, I made her... I cooked her a meal, a fine meal one night. It was the best meal you could ever eat, ladies. Bacon spaghetti. I mean, it was so... <laughs> That's all I knew how to cook, man. I, I fried bacon and I, I chopped it up in the spaghetti. And she was like, mmm, this is good. <laughs> yeah, she was in love, so it was good, but it tasted terrible. Right? Now, all right. God has designed a plan for you. That's what you have to know. For you. My first point, and I haven't got to the first point, but is this. The first key is God's plan is a fact. It's real. God knew you and your plan before you were born 
or before you were formed in your mother's womb. And I'm going to come back to that point. But God has designed this blueprint. Do you know a plan is, is great? A plan, one, two, three. No, but what's a blueprint? It's like detailed. We need blueprints, man. Right? God has the blueprints. But the blueprints, sometimes you don't always see every step right away. You're not going to see every step you're supposed to take your whole life. But guess what? You're going to see the step now. And if you're where you're supposed to be, God can confirm that you are where you're supposed to be by His Spirit. That's why learning to follow the Holy Spirit and hearing the voice of God is so vital to finding the plan. And what did I say earlier? A great man of God once said it. I'm just repeating one of the greatest men who ever lived on the earth. He said, most people will live and die and never even discover God's plan for their life. That's why, because most people, not you, say not me, Live for themselves. What a shallow life. How shallow could that be? Just live about what you want to do all the time. I want to listen to this. I want to go here. I want to do that. For three years when I was in Bible college, I picked children up every Saturday. For three years. I was faithful to pick those kids up. And many got saved. 1,000 young people got saved. Because Tom and I, who's a pastor down the street at 51st and Memorial, we love people. And we prayed that God would show us His heart. And that He would give us the souls of young people when we were 22. And you know what happened? We had a revival in Kuwait, right over here, right in this city right here. 1,000 young people got saved. It wasn't overnight. It was week after week of hard work and care and love for those kids. You know, we all like to throw arms and say we love people, but what do we do? Shows we love people. Oh, I love Jesus. I love people. I love Jesus. I love people. But God sees how much you love Him by what you do for Him, even though it's not law. But I express my love to my wife by my actions. I express love to my father, not just with words, you see, but with my actions. So for three years, we would drive to these apartment complexes and pick children up and bring them back to the firehouse. We named it the firehouse. It went for years and years and years. After Tom and I turned it over, another couple took it over, a young couple, turned it into a youth group and made it part of a church. It kept going and going. And I think they're pastors now in where? You preached in their church. Yeah. They're pastors here in Oklahoma. But their lives were touched by it. So see, you know, when you, when you get close to Jesus and you, you want to touch His heart, He's going to touch your heart. And He's going to touch people through you. When you touch... Draw near to me. You ever seen that painting? Who painted that famous painting? God and man. You know, with the finger of God, the finger of man. Who was that? Michelangelo? Was that Michelangelo? Come on, young people. Yeah. Was it Michelangelo? All right. That's all he wants. Just, just give him, just give him a little, a little bit of a handout like that. Not a handout, but you know a handout. <laughs> Hold out your heart to him. All right, God, I want to know your plan. So you see, some of you have never asked God, what is His plan for my life? Because you didn't realize you needed to, but you do. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to push that button today and say, God wants you to ask Him where He wants you to be, who He wants you to be with, and what He wants you to do. That's how Paul's, Paul's whole life got started after he got saved. Don't you remember the light that came down on Paul? And he, he, said, he said, who are you, Lord? Well, isn't that, that's what it's all about. Who is he? I want to know him. I want to be intimate. I want to be close to Jesus, right? That's a key to the plan. Staying close. Probably the most important one. But then what did Paul say? What do you want me to do? Two things. Paul asked God. Jesus, who, who are you? There was that desire to know him. Say, already, immediately, who are you? <laughs> I need to know you. Then he said, now what do you want me to do? And Paul dropped his whole life. Yeah. I'm going to stand on this pew because I want to. It's all right? <laughs> Paul dropped his whole life for another one yeah. in a moment of time. He dropped his plan and he gave everything to Jesus. He says, all right, here it is. Here's my heart. Here's my life. What do you want me to do? He said, go into the city. And guess what? He met Ananias and he laid his hands on him and he got filled with the power of the Spirit. And then Paul was a, a burning and a shining light to the world. 
But his passion was his love for Jesus. Listen, I've watched ministers lose their love for Jesus. I've, I've lost my passion for Jesus a few times. I told you I have. But I've learned how to get it back and not let, it, not let that. Because I've learned that's the danger. The greatest danger is losing that close place with Him on a daily basis. Amen? It's not just the thirst for knowledge either. It's the knowledge of Him. Do you want knowledge? Well, go to, you can, there's plenty of places to get knowledge. It's not just gaining knowledge. It's knowing who God is. The experience of His presence and His power and His glory. Amen? This is what made me a young man who I was as a young man. And I'm telling you these things. Amen? On our journey through life, it has waypoints. What's that? Signs, beacons, lighthouses from God to keep us going the right way. There are places for us to be, people for us to meet, and things for us to do. Our future actions will touch many lives. Some of these people will never make it or be successful without you in their life. Amen? Hallelujah. Psalms 127.1. Now, I want to say this real quick, too. I, I went back and I thought, how many times did I come close to just going the wrong way, big time? At least eight. Pastors, we got to tell the truth, man. We got to be honest with you know. We try to paint this picture like we're some spiritual mega giant up here, and we want people to worship up. I'm sick of that stuff. I'm sick of it. Come on, are you or not? I'm not. I'm the same as you. I put my pants on the same as you. I believe God. I pray. I seek God. I work hard. Amen. And it's not about what I can get from people. It's about what can I do for people. We have to keep that right. Amen? Hallelujah. A love for Jesus, a love for people. A love for Jesus, a love for people. You want to know what life's about? A love for Jesus and a love for people. God wants you to know the right person to marry, but if you don't know how to follow the Holy Spirit and hear His voice, how will you know to marry the right person? God has a plan for you to marry the right person. How many would say amen? amen. How many have been divorced ten times and say amen? You know what I'm saying? I don't mean that bad, but... My mom was married six times, okay? Six. Probably would have been ten if she could have. I don't mean that bad. But I'm just saying, my mom was looking for fulfillment in a man. And she never got it. She was beautiful. Beautiful woman. She was a model. She never got fulfillment from men. Women, men will not fulfill you. Only Jesus. See, that's why if you put Jesus first, He will show you the man that will take care of you. He will show you the man that will not leave you. Ooh, that was a good one. How many of you don't want your husband to leave you? Well, we need to marry the right one then, don't we? <laughs> if that's the plan of God, is to have the right one, right? Amen? Psalms 127.1. But let me go back real quick to this before I read this verse. I counted at least, I'd say, eight times where I was about to go the wrong way, and God just, I was about to marry the wrong girl. We weren't engaged, but I liked her a lot, and God literally spoke to me in my prayer closet that that was the wrong girl. And he saved me, but it was close. Three months later, guess who walks up into my life? <laughs> I've never squirted that many. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if I can talk now, Chip. <laughs> she walks in the door, or I walk in the door. Three months later, and there's this woman standing there. You no, know, she was sitting in the corner, praying. And I'm thinking, man, that girl can pray now. That hey girl, look at that girl. <laughs> I probably dropped everything I had. I mean, this, she got my attention, man. I've, ne I've never had... All right, I'm, this is, I'm going to wrap it up here. Let me read this verse. Unless the, I got a few more minutes. I'm, I'm getting ahead. But when I, when I saw her, though, I was close to God when I saw my wife. I was close to God. I, most of my life I've been close to God, but I've had a few times just like you where I kind of got off the path. Come on, have you? Be honest. I'm a pastor. I'm telling you the truth, right? We should, right? <laughs> but we should talk about these things because that's how we learn. But when I saw her, something leap. It was like uh, Tarzan in the jungle, man, or something. I, I'm serious. It wasn't just, it was something in here. Oh, 
One more time. Everybody together. Oh, you didn't know I could do that, did you? I'm so talented. Oh, yeah. No, it was something did come by something leaped inside here. And, you know, I said, you know what? I knew there was something about that girl. And that day I asked her for, was it that day? No, no. It was a few weeks later I saw her in Bible college and she was walking past me. I'm like, hey, you. Hey, 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 you. Uh, you know, hey, would you like to go to the Christmas banquet? Like, Jesus, please go to the Christmas banquet. I know, and I'm thinking, please say yes. I will, I'm not, I won't exist if you don't say yes. I don't know if I'll exist anymore, please. And she says, no, I'm sorry, I can't go to the Christmas banquet. <laughs> and I just like, I'm like, deflated, you know. But then she gets this little spark in her eye, and she goes, but I'll give you my phone number. I'm like, oh, yeah, baby, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so it was on like Donkey Kong, <laughs> you know. But what if I had not listened to the Lord? The other girl was perfect for another person. That didn't mean she wasn't a wonderful person. She was amazing, but she wasn't the right one for me. Amen. And I think that some of those, those decisions that you make, those important ones, especially who I'm going to marry, my friends, where I work, where I go to church, um, uh, what city I live in. See, these are decisions that, let me be honest, should li- be laid before the Lord. You should not move to another city unless you lay it before the Lord because it could be the worst city you've ever been to. <laughs> you could open a horror story for yourself. Why? Because it may not be God's will for you to live in Denver, Colorado. God told me to live here. Or I'd be living somewhere else. I would. I would not be here. I'd be on a beach. I lived on the islands years of my life with beaches. I love, I love the mountains, but no, God put me right here. Oklahoma by Hakey Creek right here. There's Hakey Creek. I don't want to be There's beachfront property right here. I'm telling you, who wants the beachfront property? I, 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 100,000, 200. I'm just kidding. This is a joke. But God sends me to beachfront property on Hakey Creek. Because I don't belong to me. Well, I'm going to move here and get a new job. You know, it's paying more money. Yeah, and you might open up misery for yourself too, darling. Because why? Because you didn't seek the Lord about it. There are pitfalls. There are rabbit holes that are dark. That will lead you into places that will kill you and destroy you. And God knows how to stay away from them. Amen. I've had God rescue me from situations. I shouldn't have made it, but boy, He came through. Aren't you thankful for His grace and love and mercy? Amen. Amen. Psalm 127, 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Now, I want you to listen to the first part of this verse. Young people, all of you are young people. Unless the Lord builds the house, unless, unless the Lord builds my plan, I'm laboring in vain. The Lord has a plan for you. He wants to build your house. You know, when, when my wife built this house, I won't even take any credit for it. <laughs> well, my wife built our house. We sold our house. Why? Why did we sell our other house? Because the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, sell your house now. He spoke to me. The Holy Spirit did. You know what we did in two weeks? We'd been remodeling it. She had. Sold it for a huge profit. Then you know what? We were able to take that money and build this house. See, God knows everything, every detail about your life. He knows if you go to that place this week that it will sidetrack you. But He knows if you go to this other place that it's going to fuel your vision. And God will put you in places that will fuel the fire in your heart for Him. Amen? There is a way that seems right to a man. And that's your way. Everybody say, I don't want my plan. One of the greatest revelations you can get is that God has a plan and that His plan is not your plan. But that His plan is inside of you and it's protected for you, not from you. But what's the key? One of the keys is what? Close intimacy with him put a key in that door and open it what does that mean 
I told some young people recently, when you put your head on daddy's chest, I used to sit in grandpa's lap and he'd give me a check every week. <laughs> a dollar, one dollar bill, he gave me a dollar, right? But I'd sit in grandpa and I'd, I'd bite his ear. I was close to my grandpa. My grandpa and I were like peas and carrots, man. But he, would, he, he loved me. But that's how Papa God wants us to be. It's not about a big ministry. Is it about souls? Yes. Is it about people? Yes. But you lose sight. If you lose sight of the main thing, you got to keep the main thing, the main thing. The main thing has to be kept the main thing or else no matter how great whatever you think is is great, it's going to get you off the path because you're not keeping the main thing the main thing, which is what? Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Like Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, he said that I may know Him. He said, I count all things lost compared to the excellency of the knowledge of what? I count everything as rubbish? Dung. I don't know if you ever picked up a pile of dung. I have. Have you ever picked up a pile of duty or something? You know what I'm saying? Well, we, when I was in the Boy Scouts, yes, I was a Boy Scout, actually, believe it or not. We had cow patty fights. Yes, we had cow. We'd get out in the... And I remember one time somebody picked up a fresh cow patty. And I was coming around the corner, a young Boy Scout about eight years old, and I got a whole cow patty in my face. Like, I mean, it was raw and still green, man. I'm like, I can't see. I can't see. It literally, I couldn't see for like three or four minutes because it was all in my eyes and everything. So we don't like that stuff. Mm. We don't like the smell. We don't like how yeah, this stuff is nasty, right? Well, Paul said everything else in this life is like that compared to that. His name is Jesus, amen? Everything in life means nothing when we compare it to Jesus. So one of the greatest things as ministers we can teach young people to do, and we should as pastors, listen, pastors, I humbly say this, is to teach people to know Him. I can give you every principle in the world, but when you know him, you get your own principles. Maybe he wants you to write a book. Maybe he wants to write a unique book about your life. Or you, you have a unique plan. And it's not like mine or Bob Derby's or Chris Cochran's or, or Chip or anybody else or Joshua. Or, it, it's different. Your plan is unique to you alone. You don't want to be like me. You want to be like who God called you to be. But how are you going to discover it? Put your head on Father's chest and listen. Get involved in a body of believers, wherever that is, here somewhere, because it begins to help to activate your gifts in the body of Christ. I never would have known I was an evangelist as a young man had I not stood on the street corner and preached. Or when in, the teacher would leave the room. And I'd jump up and preach. I did, 13 years old. The teacher would leave our classroom and I would jump up and preach. But my gift began to come out. As I began to do things, my gift came out. And I began to see, wow, I have an evangelistic gift as a young man. Amen? There's a way that seems. Proverbs 14, 12. There's only 11. Everybody hang with me. Proverbs 14, 12 in the New Living Translation. There is a path before each person that seems right. But in the end, it leads to death. And let me say this off the... I just... I, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Because I love my people. If you've seen what I've seen in the world, world of the Spirit, you wouldn't play with witchcraft. This is off the subject, folks. But somebody in here is dabbling in... It's dark. It's not something to play with. If you've seen what I've seen, what Chris Cochran has seen, what some of these men of God have seen, what Chip has seen on the mission field with witchcraft and how it destroys lives. And how the enemy tries to suck young people in with this power, this, it's, it's, it's curiosity. And he sucks them in and, oh, you can do spells. And, but uh, you're, you're fellowshipping with demons. And just like you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, when you do witchcraft, you're fellowshipping with demonic forces. And guess what? They're going to be happy to come and, and have a little party with you, see? And they're going to have a party, and soon they're going to want to have a party inside you. And when they have the party inside you, that's when you begin to lose yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's very dangerous. How many of you understand witchcraft is very dangerous? And then media is trying to make it like it's okay. It's not. It's an abomination to God. Don't play with it. If you play with it, you're only asking for friends to come around. 
And I, when I say that, I've seen demonic men. I have demons talk, I've had demons talk to me through people. I've had demons come up to me and say they tried to kill me. I had a guy possessed by a demon try to kill me one time. I've had two people possessed by demons try to kill me. I had a bodybuilder try to choke me to death in the middle of a church service. But I cast the devil out of him and he was delivered by the power of God. He came at me, tried to kill me, grabbed me by the neck, pulled me right off the stage. And in the middle of my humanity, I had no idea why this bodybuilder wanted to kill a nice preacher like me. <laughs> but when the power of the Spirit hit me and I felt like Superman, I literally I felt the power of the Spirit hit me. And I socked my hand right. He picked me up off the stage, man. He's carrying me around like a bottle of pencils. He's got me like this, and my head's like, ah, and I can't even hardly talk. And I'm, ah. I'm up off the ground, big, tall bodybuilder legs. He walks like this. I remember. He walked like that. He picks me up, preacher. And he's got this look, and suddenly I, I didn't know what to do, and I felt the power of the Spirit come on me, and I said, in the name of Jesus, come out of him. When I told that demon to leave him, he was immediately delivered, fell on the floor and let me go, and his eyes spun around in circles. So don't tell me witchcraft is something good to play with. I'm warning you as your pastor, as your friend, I'm warning you as a mentor to some of you young people, do not play with those spells, do not play with that junk, because it is a pathway to darkness with which is hard to get free from. But, but he can set people free, he can do all things, right? All things are possible. Now, why would I throw that in? Because there's some young people I've been picking up. You're playing with it. You say, oh, it won't hurt anything. Well, if you keep going down the rabbit hole, Alice had a hard time getting out. <laughs> okay, let's look at this. We're almost done. Just a couple minutes. Hang with me. What is a plan? What is a plan? Webster says a plan is a method for achieving an end, a detailed formulation of a program of action. A detailed formulation of a program of action. An orderly arrangement of parts of an overall design or objective, a goal or an aim. Now, a blueprint is a little more extensive, isn't it? You've got blueprints uh, with uh, electrical, and, uh, the, you know, all kinds of different kinds of blueprints, right? So God has a blueprint for your life. God is the master architect who designed your plan specifically for you and you alone. God is the master architect who has designed your plan specifically for you and you alone. The blueprint touches a lot of people's lives if you obey. God's plan is usually in steps. Are you with me? I knew God told me to come to Bible college here in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, to the Bible college, and I came. That was a step, see? What if I had not went on the first step? Step by step, the plan is revealed in steps usually, but he will show you some things down the road, but not all of it. Why? Because it takes faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen, and faith pleases God. Amen? So faith, we believe by faith. The blueprint touches a lot of people's lives. So if we're led in steps usually, purpose to never get ahead of God, but to stay in perfect step. All right? I mean, Chris Cochran used to be a big, bad, mean rapper. I mean, just look at him. He's a teddy bear. Look, stand up, Chris. Spin around. Yeah, I, I really want to. We, I used to be a mean rapper who would take your head off in a second, but now he's a sweet, calm, loving pastor, see? Only Jesus can do that, right? I'm not saying rap's bad. Some of There's some good Christian rap, but you do have to watch what you listen to, right? All right, focus on the step you're on now. It's called faithfulness. Focusing on the step in your life that you're in now is simply called being faithful. Honoring what God has called you to do. Sometimes, you know, I, I'm an antsy guy. I will get antsy and want to do too many things. But no, I've got to focus on what God has. Amen? Hallelujah. Some things cannot be rushed. Our spiritual development is a marathon, not a sprint. Your spiritual development is a marathon, not a sprint. I was faithful. I'm going to read, I'm going to do, read this, and then I'm going to read the Scripture, and then we're going to close today. But please remember at the end of service, go out, get some of that food, guys, or some yummy meat. <laughs> Can't wait to try the meatballs. I, I do like meatballs. I just, I'm not just saying that. I really ask my wife. I love meatballs. And then there's lots of little goodies and treats for the girls, lunch, and all that good stuff out here, right? 
So some things cannot be rushed. Our spiritual development is a, is, is a, is a long journey, not just a, a sprint. I was faithful to follow each step along the way, my wife and I. Moved to Broken Arrow. But why did, I, why did I do that? Why did I move to Broken Arrow? Because I wanted his will. I delight David. You want a heart like David? Come on, be honest. Do you really want a heart like David? You're in the wrong church if you don't want a heart like David. I don't mean that bad, but this is going to be a church with a heart like David. Uh, David's heart was, I delight, Psalm 40, verse 8. I delight to do your will, O God. Your law is in my heart. You know what it was like? He was burning. It was the will of God. It was burning in his heart. Let the will of God burn. I love the will of God. I live on the will of God. It's like Jesus said in Luke, or what Jesus said in Luke 4, he was saying, man lives not just on bread. Bread gives life to your flesh. He said, man lives by words that come out of the mouth of God. In other words, the same bread that gives your body life, his word literally brings life to your body. Because that's why you took your breath when you came out of your mama. It wasn't your daddy that gave you that breath or your mama, but God gave you the breath of life when you came out of the womb, my friend. You're a living soul, a living being, and all of you will live forever. Amen? I want to read this last scripture, and I'm going to close. The mature, Romans 8, 14 through 16, a couple minutes. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Spirit. Moved by what? The Holy Spirit gives us impulses? Yeah, He'll show you what to do. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty. Thank God it's not just religious duty. Connecting is about connecting where you're supposed to connect. A joint to another joint in the body which produces one body which can do anything. We can do anything together, guys. I, can't, I need you. You need me. We do it together. Amen? He said, leading you back. This spirit of religious duty would lead you back into fear of never being good enough. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance and folding you into the family of God. And you will never feel orphaned. I felt orphaned before when I was young. Did anybody feel, ever feel orphaned? No mom and dad. For as He rises up within us, our spirits join Him in saying the words of tender affection. Beloved Father, let that come out of your mouth today. Look at my face. I'm not here to do this for me. I'm here for you today. Let these words come out of your mouth today as we close. As we close. Beloved Father. Beloved Father. And I'll, I'll hit that verse when we come back next week, right? Twelve keys to the plan. Don't miss a week. If you, want, if you value the will of God, if you don't, you'll never see it. You won't see it. I'm going to say this, you probably will not, I won't say you won't, but you'll probably never see most of it if you don't pursue it. The will of God must be pursued. Are you pursuing that will today? Young man, God has such a great plan for you. So powerful. Young men, young women, all of you. Let's just close our eyes a moment. I'm going to invite my wife just to come stand by me for a second as we do an altar call. But this altar call is a little different today, I feel. Please close your eyes today, please. I'm just, I'm, I want to be the only one looking around with my wife. And if you're here today and you say, I want to sell out to the will of God, the plan of God. I, I really want the plan. And listen, I'm not going to judge you if you don't raise your hand. I'm not here to judge no person, no man, no woman, no young person. So don't think that. I, I, I'm just standing in the place of the Lord right now looking at you with a big heart saying, I want everything God's got for your life. Do you understand me when I stand up here and I say I care about you? I do. I do care. I'm asking you to take that knob in your heart and turn up the hunger for Him. Listen to me. Turn the hunger up. Turn up your desire for His will because that is really what's going to make you happy. Listen, that's what's going to make you happy, not your will, not your plan. That's why we, we, don't, we want that plan more than anything. Why? Because that's where the true joy is in life. 
Hallelujah. So right now, if you're here today and you say, I just, I just want to sell out today with everything I am, everything, my mind, my body, my soul, my spirit, everything, every thought, every action. I just really want to be sold out to the will of God. My wife's going to pray with you. Committed to Him. We're going to pray this prayer together as a body. If you're watching online, you can just pray it with us. Say, Father. I make a